Well, it's not possible to cry in space, no matter how many heartbreaking soap operas you just watched. Even if you try really hard to weep, the tears just won't shed. They shed because of the gravity law, which works differently on a spaceship. Still, your lacrimal glands work as usual, so if you start crying, all the tears will accumulate right in your eyes. The more you cry, the bigger the tear clump gets. Basically, you can shed only one tear from each eye. But even if you don't cry, it's impossible to have a normal face in space. It'll be a bit puffy in brand new conditions. A nature's call is a nature's call no matter where you are. There are two reasons why astronauts can't flush the toilet in space. First, water is the most precious resource on a spaceship. Second, there's no running water in space. The potable water on a space station comes in pouches, and there it stays. For either number in weightlessness, there's a device with suction and disposable bags to put inside it. The storage gets changed every 10 days. Also, the ISS is equipped with a super complicated device that recycles and filters waste into the water the astronauts use every day. A sandwich, an avocado, an egg toast, a crispy croissant, chips. That's a short list of stuff you're never gonna eat in space. Sure thing, Zero G will carry all the crumbs away while you're nibbling on a chocolate chip cookie. Those crumbs spread all over the spaceship in no time, and trust me, the best place they can end up is in your eyes. Otherwise, they can interfere with the spaceship equipment, which is something you don't want to happen. Astronauts have a variety of meals, including fruit, which can be eaten in their normal form, and pasta, which obviously requires some boiling. Now, nobody promised you an a la carte menu on a spaceship, but you can easily cook mac and cheese. Water and heating ovens are provided, as well as the rest of essential gear. Bad news? There are no fridges in space, so you can't save leftovers for tomorrow. Good news? You have a variety of condiments, ketchup, mayo, even mustard. Mm. They're actually very important. Remember, you can't sprinkle anything in space. It concerns salt and pepper, too. For the rest, astronauts' meals look very much like regular picnics with friends. Somewhere in a peaceful meadow, but no campfire, guys. There's not enough oxygen for it, and you can't open the windows. One more thing you'll have to forget about when you travel to space is freshly brewed coffee to brighten up your mornings. There's just no way you can make it unless you want to spend the rest of your mission covered with ground coffee beans. Still, it doesn't mean you won't enjoy coffee at all. You'll just have to make do with its capsule version. It tastes pretty good, plus you'll get a lovely space view. Anyway, you aren't very likely to spot the difference between regular and space coffee. Food and beverages in space taste somewhat different, and many astronauts admit it all tastes so much stronger back on Earth. One of the reasons is that body fluids move differently because of zero-g, and instead of being where the legs are, they rise up to the head blocking air passages. Also, there are many strong odors in the cabin which dulls people's senses, especially smell. If you ever spend a couple of months in space, hey, send me a text. You might want to shave, cut your hair, and certainly clip all your nails. But in fact, all the small hairs and cut nails are very much like breadcrumbs. Once you cut them, they start literally floating in the air, and you don't want your buddy's toenail to end up right in your face. Astronauts can use either a disposable razor or an electric one. If they use disposable razors, they first need to wet the skin. They squeeze a water bubble, catch it, and spread it all over their faces. The next step isn't much different from what they can do on Earth. You just need to apply some shaving cream. Then the shaving starts as normal. To get rid of hairs from the blade, they just clean it with a small bubble of water and a dry towel. They squeeze one more water bubble to wipe their face, and voila! They're clean-shaven now. Things are a little different with electric razors. These devices have a special tool attached on top, which looks like a tiny vacuum cleaner. It takes care of all the unwanted hairs once they're cut. Astronauts clip their nails right in front of an air duct, which has a suction device to trap the nails. Sure, the nails bounce off while they're cutting them, so yeah, they gotta catch every single nail and put it down to the duct. The same air duct is responsible for refreshing the air on board. The nail clipper itself has a Velcro patch on it not to lose it in zero-g. Now you're ready to play guitar in space. By the way, any loose items have Velcro patches to store them too. Now on to the harder stuff. Since the mid-20th century, washing your body has gotten a lot easier than ever with the rise of home showers. That's true, unless you're in space. Forget all those fancy shower gels and body creams. On a spaceship, you've got nothing but a no-rinse body bath pouch. To use it, an astronaut should fill it with 6 ounces of hot water and 2 ounces of cold water. 
This bag has a straw on top to squirt water bubbles out of it. One bubble in this slightly soapy water is enough to wash your hands. Once you're done, grab a towel and dry your hands. Then you can tuck it someplace to let it air dry. The good thing is that the evaporated water gets back to the station so the astronauts can reuse it. If you want to take a shower instead, you spread those soapy bubbles all over your body. No regular shower is possible on a spaceship. To try a space-inspired shower at home, try to do that with either wet wipes or measure 8 ounces of water, grab a towel, spread the water all over your body, and dry it. Refreshing, huh? Those who have really long hair, no worries! All you need are a no-rinse shampoo, a pouch of water, a comb, and a towel. Squirt some water onto your scalp and work it from the roots to the ends of the hair. Then add some magic shampoo and comb the hair. Add some more water if needed and dab the towel on your scalp to dry the excess. Actually, the towel helps get rid of grease, too. Sounds bizarre, but the hair is squeaky clean once the astronaut's done. Brushing your teeth probably doesn't sound that challenging now. With the toothbrush, it soaks up the water easily. By the way, the toothbrush the astronauts use looks like a standard tube. Once you're done, open the tap, clean the toothbrush… <laughs> gotcha! You can't do that! So the only thing you can actually do is swallow the toothpaste. But there's nothing wrong with it. Astronauts say it's edible. The tube is standard, but the toothpaste you see in stores definitely requires rinsing. Don't try space-inspired toothbrushing at home. Astronauts can't sleep like people do on Earth. A cozy bed and dimness are inaccessible while you're on a spaceship. People in space see 16 sunrises and sunsets a day because their orbital velocity is about 17,500 miles per hour. Each sunrise and sunset lasts a few seconds, so there's not enough time to take a photo, not to mention falling asleep. All this messes up the sleep pattern, so astronauts have to learn how to fall asleep regardless of the sun. A sleep mask is a must, of course. Another problem is zero gravity. Also, when we lie down relaxing, our body temperature decreases, which is important for a quality sleep, but it's not possible in space. Some astronauts attach themselves to the walls in their sleeping bags, while others prefer to float. A good old ballpoint pen is useless in space. To use it, ink should flow, which doesn't happen if there's no gravity. A simple pencil is a no-go either. Once you sharpen it, you gotta deal with all the mess left behind. When people just started exploring space back in the 60s, they would use mechanical pencils to make notes. A space pen was introduced long before, in 1965. It had a cartridge pressurized with nitrogen, so the ink there is pressurized toward the tip. This pen can be used literally anywhere, underwater, in extreme sub-zero temperatures, and even during an exam. Mm -hmm. Bonus fact! If you're into baseball, don't travel to space. Even if your spaceship is large enough, chances are the ball will just float.